Hi there, it's Nicole here today and I'm going to be sharing some ideas for stenciling with pigment inks. I am using these awesome new little square pigment inks from a new company to me. Um, I believe it's Mommy Lay. I hope I'm saying that right. But they come in sets of three inks and there are several different sets. I am going to be using a couple different sets of pigment inks today, the Serenity set and the Coastal Breeze set. And I am going to be pairing those with the Magical Sea stamps, also from the same company. Adorable, adorable stamps. Now, what I like to do is I like to use the Sukuneko daubers to apply the pigment ink. It's just a completely different look than what you would get from something like um, Distress Ink. I laid out the Simon Says Stamp Waves stencil. Um, I did put a little adhesive underneath my cardstock that I'm using as my base so that it wouldn't shift. Um, I did that on my grid mat there behind um, my cardstock. Then I taped down my stencil with a little low tack tape. I'm using post-it tape. And then I'm simply applying a really nice layer of pigment ink all over this stencil or any of those areas that are not covered by the stencil, I guess I want to say. The base color I'm using is Seabreeze. Really great blue color. This is totally going to be tone on tone, um, covering it really well. One of the great things about pigment inks is that they are really juicy. They stay wet. Um, they can be used for embossing. They also, the color, instead of absorbing into the cardstock like a dye ink, it's going to set on top of that cardstock and really keep its color. So it's not going to fade. I'm going to just lift that a little bit so you can kind of see what it looks like. Then I'm going to go ahead and grab my Beach Bum color of ink. It's really hard to tell, but it's slightly darker. And instead of completely covering all of those areas, I'm simply adding little bits of color here and there. It's gonna give a nice kind of ombre effect, a variation in color along all of those little wave lines, and just really add interest. Now, you obviously can stamp with these, and I am gonna stamp my greeting with these, but this is just one thing that I really love to do with pigment inks. I think they're great for, for um, stenciling and using through all kinds of things, um, direct to paper techniques as well. I'm even going to go so far as taking a little hill die here. This is from Simon Says Stamp, one of their Slopes and Hills dies. And I'm going to die cut some craft cardstock using this die. Take another dauber, and I'm going to be using the Tainted Brown ink. And I'm inking it up, kind of dabbing it off on my grid paper to get some of that ink off. And then very lightly tapping it all over my craft cardstock. This is going to give me some variation in color for my sand that's going to be along the bottom of this sea scene that I am building. So that's just kind of a direct to paper kind of technique. I'm not even using a stencil. I'm going to go ahead and take those stamp images from the Magical Sea stamp set. I'm using the Mermaid. I need to stamp her a couple times. I did not get a very good impression the first couple times. I should have stamped her off on my grid paper background first, but I didn't. I'm also going to stamp the Seaweed three times. I'm creating multiples here um, so that I can really build my scene. And then I'm taking the Adorable Fish and I'm going to stamp that cute little guy five times. I really want to have a full sea scene. And while there is a whale and a cute little octopus in this stamp set, I chose to kind of stick with these images for my card scene here today. I am going to color in everything with Copic markers. I am going to definitely speed up the video to kind of get through that a little bit quicker, but I know I have a bunch of you who like watching the coloring, kind of like seeing how the images come to life with the colors. I am listing the Copic colors that I am using along the bottom of the screen for reference. I colored in the seaweed first, and then I'm moving on to the hair, and what is a mermaid without red hair? like the Little Mermaid. Um, so I tend to 
for some reason my mermaids tend to all look like Ariel uh, and with the hair at least so I started and I'm doing red hair and I picked a fun color combination for the red hair I am using YR 14 18 and E09 so it's very orangey looking I think when it gets started but as I feather in some of those darker colors and really build it up I think it definitely kind of takes on that red tint that I was looking for I even once I go in with my EO9 which is going to be my darkest color I will go back with my lighter colors and blend it out when I'm doing an image that has really great hair like this one does I tend to want to start with that and then build out from there because if the hair is done well I think it just kind of makes the whole image so I definitely spent some time on her hair feathering it in adding those darker areas trying to really build up the color and make her hair really awesome I ended up really loving this color combination for red hair um, I think this is one I've not used before I happened to find this one I think on Pinterest and I liked it a lot I'm always pinning something or another different hair color combinations I feel like I use the same ones over and over so I tried to kind of go and find new ones even though I think I probably do revert back to the same old ones that I tend to use I'm going to move on to her skin not a ton of it showing just kind of her face here in her arm and a little bit of her back very very easy a little R20 for the cheeks I even went back in with my EO9 adding a little bit more color to her hair darkening up a few areas where it naturally would be darker kind of pull that all in really make her pop then I also picked some kind of different colors that I don't normally use for her mermaid tail um, I didn't want to use green I felt like I needed something that was going to be a little bit different where the seaweed was green and the ocean water I did kind of in aqua colors I wanted her fishtail kind of to be something different and so I ended up going with a color combination of B63 66 and 79 and I'm going to build that color up and while I love it and I think it looks great as is it looks even better I started to use my wink of still Stella clear glitter brush pen and then I was I thought no wait a second because I want to add some different detail so I let that dry for a minute colored in the star in her hair with a couple colors of yellow colored in her little bikini top with a couple shades of kind of magenta color but then I'm going to take my op opaque white pen and I'm going to add some dot detail to all of those stamp lines in her fishtail so little dots of color following those black stamped lines and I think that makes the whole image pop it makes it interesting makes it fun to look at once the white marker is dry I took the wink of Stella clear glitter brush pen in fact I kind of I didn't wait quite long enough there at the top of her uh, fishtail so I had to kind of fix that but I took the wink of Stella clear glitter brush pen and went over the entire mermaid tail next I'm ready for the fish to make it easy I'm going to color all the fish exactly like this one using Y11, Y18, and YR04 I'll even use a little bit of YR09 at the end for those little fins and things along the top darken those up fun color combination again I wanted something that was going to pop something that was different than the greens and blues that I'm using so her hair is definitely going to be one of those things that pops off the card and I wanted the, wanted the fish to pop too so the yellow and orange kind of provide that I'll go ahead and color the remaining fish in exactly the same I've really sped this up because it is exactly the same I did do a little dotted detail once I have all of the colors completely blended the way I want them to look I'm going back in with YR09 YR04 and Y18 and adding that dot detail that really makes those fish special make sure blend all of those out here's the little dot detail going in with all of my markers 
Now, the fun part was I sat in front of the TV actually and fussy cut all of these images. It did take a little bit of work, but I think it's so worth it. Um, I love that there's no white outline around any of the images. You can really see kind of that ombre effect in the background that I achieved with the pigment inks now. So super fun. Now I laid everything out and I haven't attached it yet, but I am taking greetings. I'm taking one of the greetings from the Magical Sea stamp set. The other one, the Hello, is actually from the Hello stamp set. So I'm combining a couple different stamp sets here. So it's going to say hello, and then it's going to say, shh, don't tell anybody I am a mermaid. And I just think that's really kind of cute, clever, and fun. Super fun little card. I'm going to use some glue dots now to attach my images to my card base, starting with my mermaid. And then I will build everything around her. I'm going to have a couple of the fish slightly hanging off of the edges of the card. That just kind of helps ground the whole scene, um, makes it much more interesting so that it doesn't feel like the elements are just floating out in space. It just grounds everything really nicely. I'm using these Zotz Bling glue dots to attach everything but the seaweed. The seaweed was really intricate. Um, so I chose to use some liquid adhesive instead. I do not do that very often be just because I tend to make a mess with liquid adhesive and I'm much more comfortable with something like glue dots or a um, tape runner, but I did use the Zig glue pin to attach all of my seaweed pieces. Just kind of really carefully do that. I'm gonna take my black glaze pen and add detail to the eyes on all of the fish. I it's one thing I always like to do. It really makes the fish, or critter eyes pop, in this case, the fish. I'm taking my white gel pen and adding some detail to the little dots that are already on the fins on the fish. I, while that looks great, I added so much white detail to the mermaid and I loved how it looked, so I am gonna end up going back and adding tons more white detail here when I finish putting everything together on the card. Here's that liquid adhesive using the Zig glue pin to attach that. Layering some of the seaweed over the fish so it looks like the fish are swimming kind of behind it there. Just another way to really build a fun scene. So I've got a couple pieces of seaweed here. I'm using a acrylic and acrylic block to hold those down. It's just something heavy so that they dry nice and flat and don't curl up. I'll attach my other little seaweed here over on the right side of the card. Go ahead and flip it over and trim off anything that is overhanging. So just those two fish. I'm going to take my white pin and add detail to the seaweed and the fish now. Just little details that really can take your card up a notch. I love the look of this. I didn't know that I would at first. A lot of times when I go into making a card, I have a pretty good idea of where I'm gonna go with the card and what I'm gonna do. This was a lot more detail added to the images than I sometimes do, and I think the result was really awesome for this particular card. I'm also using the Stardust Glitter Pen from to uh, create some nice sand. You can kind of see the glitter here. In real life, it's even better, but it really helps with that sand effect. I'm also gonna go in with my white pen and add some dots as well. I like the combination of both of them. Lots of layering for the sand here. So not only do I have the pigment ink that I applied over the craft card stock, but I've got the Stardust glitter pen and my white opaque pen. adding lots of little dots. It just makes that sand look a little bit more realistic. As realistic as you can get for kind of a cutesy style card. There you can see it a little bit better maybe. I'm going to attach my card to a top fold card base. It was already trimmed down to four inches by five and a quarter inches. I'm going to use a little glossy accents. I had to unclog it a little bit. Um, because I broke my applicator tip that has the little no clog and I'm waiting for my new one to come. 
And I'm going to add some glossy accents to that star in her hair to kind of help make it stand out a little bit. Finishing details. All of these little things are just little finishing details. And I needed to glue her mermaid tail down a little bit more as well. And then I am using a scattering of these awesome pretty pink posh droplets, clear droplets. I think they're perfect for making little bubbles in the ocean and they're really gonna finish it off nice. And then of course I did go back in with my white pen, I just didn't video it, and add a detail to all of the fish. So in the finished card examples, you'll be able to see that great white detail. There's a much better view of the detail of the images. Thanks for watching this video showcasing stenciling with pigment inks. Here are a couple more videos showcasing pigment inks that you might be interested in. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.